The Google Pixel and Pixel XL were two phones that took the industry by storm back in 2016. Google had experimented with their own phones before, in the Nexus line, but for the first time they were producing their own hardware, and they wanted to get it right. The Google Pixel was the result, a phone that looked pretty typical for the time, but one that featured a camera that would stand out amongst competitors. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're talking about the Google Pixel and Google Pixel XL, which is the one I have here. How do they hold up in 2019? <laughs> The first Google Pixel didn't really have the most unique design in the world, but it sure did have a unique color. This one is called Really Blue, and back in 2016 there weren't a whole lot of phones that deviated from the typical white, black, and gold colors. It looks so good, and I really wish Google would have continued doing this color because it really stands out. The design of the phone isn't the most premium in the world, but it still feels quite good. The body is made from aluminum, and we have a glass pane on the top of the back that holds the camera and fingerprint sensor. There is no camera bump, which is nice to see, and the fingerprint reader is quite large, making it easy to find with just your finger and then turn on the phone. On the bottom of the phone we have USB-C, which is great, and on the top we have the headphone jack, the last one ever in a Google phone. Of course, at its launch you might remember Google mocking Apple for removing the headphone jack, but hey, at least this phone still has one. On the side we have the power button by the two volume buttons. The power button is actually textured, making it easier to find with your finger, and I really think this is a nice touch. I wish they kept it with the newer pixels. On the front of the phone we have some super thick bezels surrounding the 5.5 inch. OLED display with a resolution of 1440 by 2560. This is a good screen, assuming you don't end up with burn-in, something that a lot of these pixels have. This isn't an issue with the pixel per se, but more of the technology of OLED, particularly in older displays. Regardless, many phones will have it, and so it's something to look out for if you're going to be buying a pixel, and unfortunately this one is a good example. It's got some of the worst burn-in I've ever seen. When looking at a white screen, it's super obvious. The whites look red, and you can totally see the navigation and notification bars on the top and bottom. On eBay when I went to buy the Pixel, it said it only had light burn-in that was only visible on a plain white screen. Obviously this wasn't true, and I gave the seller an earful for it. They also sent it to me in a boot loop. It just wouldn't start, it just kept trying to, but it wouldn't. After a little bit of figuring out, I was able to reset it by going into developer mode. But seriously, did they just never boot this thing up before they sent it to me? How did they not know it was like in a boot loop and that the burn-in was that bad? They never offered an explanation at all. In fact, the seller was quite aggressive with me, which uh, really, really bugged me. But the blue color can be a little bit hard to find, and I didn't want to go to the trouble of sending the phone back, so we settled on a partial refund. I am still super ticked at the seller, but I'm not going to post their name or any of the listing details because I don't need people going after them. Message of all of this is to be careful what you buy and be aware of deceitful photos. The Pixel has a very obvious red tinge to pretty much everything, but it's still completely usable. And Inside the bad screen, it functions perfectly fine. Back to the design, I have to question the giant bezels. I know it was pretty standard back in 2016, but I never understood these Android phones that would have them and not bother putting a physical home button, at least, on them. The home button is of course digital on the screen, just like the newest Pixel, which makes the bottom bezel feel useless. It also doesn't even have a speaker down there like the Pixel 2 and 3, which is too bad, but I digress. While I might not like the bezels, again they were super common for 2016, and so it's tough to to completely fault the phone. Battery life for me has been pretty mediocre, although I would guess that's because this phone has likely been used pretty well over its lifetime. The battery is decently large at 3450 milliamp hours, and so with most of these phones, I'd imagine you could get at least a day out of it without too much issue. The bigger ones, the XL Pixel, is always going to be better than the smaller one, so if battery life is a concern, you definitely want the XL. When it comes to internal specs, the Google Pixel isn't too far behind what we have today, in all honesty. We have the Snapdragon 821 processor, which is definitely older, but we also have 4 gigabytes of RAM, the same in the Pixel 2 and 3. For day-to-day -day use, this Pixel honestly isn't going to feel much worse than its younger brothers, and while it might not receive updates for as long, right now in 2019 I'd say it's performing pretty well. Everything I've been doing loads quickly, thanks in part to the optimization of stock Android, and while there is some lag here and there, negative occurrences are mostly few and far between. Keep in mind, while I am finding the performance pretty decent on the Pixel, I haven't been using it for that 
that long. If it was my daily driver, I might find a lot more issues. But so far, honestly, my only complaint is the terrible screen burden, and uh, well, that's not even really the phone's fault. So specs, yes, the phone is going to be slower than the newest Pixel out there, but because it has the same amount of RAM, not by much. But battery life, internal specs, and design are not the reasons you would buy a Google Pixel. Well, that's not necessarily true. The blue color is really cool, so that might be one factor as to why you'd want to buy it. But generally, there are two main reasons you would buy a Google Pixel for the software, and the camera. Let's start with that camera. While the rear sensor is only 12 megapixels, it can still produce a really sharp image, and it's extremely impressive Google made this in 2016. It's actually only gotten better since launch thanks to software updates. It's not really the hardware of the camera that makes it special, but Google's AI that comes with it. I'll show some photos in a sec, but first let's touch on both the video and selfies. Video is, to put it lightly, bad. Google has never got this right, and while it can shoot up to 4K, it it really doesn't look like it. As you can see here, it's just not good. It's kind of jittery, and you can tell the video stabilization is trying way too hard. It makes quick pans look super awkward and unnatural. I don't know why Google has struggled so much with video, but they never really talk about it, so it's obviously not a huge focus for them. The Pixel is amazing for photos, one of the best smartphones, if not the best, for 2016, but when it comes to video, you'd be better off with something else, preferably an iPhone if you really need good video. But I mean, let's be real, you're probably not taking taking a ton of 4K video on your smartphone anyway, and for the little bit of video you need, I mean, this phone will probably do the job. Something you might consider slightly more important is the selfie camera. And no worries, the Pixel does it really well. We have 8 megapixels in the front sensor and can take some really nice selfies. If you're a super vain person, this phone should do your face justice, just like every Pixel after it. One complaint is that the stupid beautification filter is enabled by default. This selfie here looks like I took an airbrush and just went hand in Photoshop, and yet it couldn't even get rid of that zit. Come on, Google. Anyways, one thing Google is really good with is making cameras better every year, both on the new Pixel and on the older ones. This is due to the software. That's really what makes Google's pictures good. And again, this selfie camera holds up pretty well right now, and in fact, in some ways, it might even be better than the Google Pixel 3 XL. Right here, I have two selfies of my vacationing self, one from the Pixel 3 XL and one from the Pixel XL. You might be able to guess which is which. The darker one is the first Pixel, and the other one is the Pixel 3. I actually really like the darker one better. These were taken in the same conditions with the focus on my face, not the background, and I feel like the background just looks much better on the Pixel 1. The Pixel 3 doesn't necessarily blow it out, but the Pixel 1 shot just pops so much more. If I had to upload one of these to social media, I'd pick the first one every single time. I mean, ideally, I wouldn't pick either, but such is life. Now mind you, I think the Pixel 3 actually took the better photo, at least in terms of detail, but it comes down to personal preference. I just really like how the Pixel 1 made the colors pop. I much prefer it to how the Pixel 3 tried to over brighten everything. Anyways, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the selfie camera holds up quite nicely, just like the rear camera. After taking a couple more selfies, I saw that the Google Pixel really does tend to keep your face dark. It likes to keep the background really, really in focus, even if you tap on your face. While I'm not a huge fan of this in all situations, I do still like the look of these photos, so I'm not going to criticize it too much. Regardless, in optimal situations, the Google Pixel can take a really great selfie. It's also worth mentioning that you can actually take portrait mode photos if you download a certain APK that basically gives you access to the newer Pixel camera that you see in the 2 and 3. I personally didn't do this, but it is quite easy to do, so look into that if you're interested. And now I'll put up some photos for you to see for yourself. If you want a budget phone with a good camera, the Pixel isn't a bad choice by any means. The Pixel and Pixel XL shipped with Android 7, or Android Nougat, and are fully updatable to Android 9 and even 10. This is where the benefit in getting a Pixel comes in. Google keeps the phones updated for way longer than anyone else on the Android side, and with Android 10, or Q, we'll be getting a full four guaranteed years of support, which is nothing to scoff at. This is particularly impressive because Google actually only a 
officially promises three years, meaning the Pixel was well made enough at the time that Google is feeling good enough to give it another year of updates. Credit to where credit is due. For context here, Samsung typically only gives about two years of updates. If you were to buy this Google Pixel today, you would be getting at least one more year of software support, which beats out pretty much any Android phone at this price range. As briefly said, the Google Pixel isn't a bad choice if you need a budget phone with a good camera. The XL goes for around $100 US on eBay.com, which is pretty fair. You'll just want to be sure to get one without any screen burn-in, as that's something that unfortunately can't be fixed without replacing the display completely. The blue color seems to be a little less common, so if you can find one of those, that would be really cool. Although, of course, the silver and black will function exactly the same. The benefit of getting the Google Pixel is at least another year of full Android support, a great camera for the price point, and an actually pretty decent phone, all for only 100 bucks. Any potential downsides of the Pixel XL are pretty much negated by that cheap price point in my eyes. It's really hard to beat it when it comes to other budget options, particularly on the Android side. Any Android phone for $100 is likely going to be at least a couple of software versions behind, making the Pixel easily the best you can get. So to conclude here, perhaps surprisingly, yes, the Google Pixel XL is totally worth buying in 2019. I would recommend the XL, but yeah, this phone is worth getting. Whether you're budget oriented or just need a temporary phone, the Google Pixel is going to give you the stock Android experience and a great camera at a fraction of the cost of any other phone. But what do you think of the Google Pixel? Is it worth buying? Do you still have one? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful or interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And with that all being said, I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I will see you all next time.